Hey folks, Machinery Pete here. I made my way down to Dyersville, Iowa today. I always love coming to Dyersville and of course you folks probably one of the things you maybe know about Dyersville that was of course the site of the filming of the great movie Field of Dreams came out in 1989 still I think my all-time favorite movie and what you're looking at here folks this is why I came down today this is the 1977 John Deere 2640 tractor that was in the movie famous scene where Kevin Costner giving his daughter a ride through the corn chopping it up making the baseball field and we have a special treat here this is the owner of the tractor. This is Donnie Lansing from Dyersville. Donnie, great to uh, come down and visit with you and, and learn about, uh, like I say, my favorite movie and, and your famous tractor. Now, you actually bought it brand new? Yes, I did. I bought it brand new from Calker Implement there in Dyersville. Danny Vasky is here too. Okay. And yeah, we'll, we're, we're going to bring Danny in in a minute and talk about that. But it was Calker Implement? Calker Implement. Okay, you remember roughly what you paid for it in 1977? Uh, probably in the range of nine to 12,000. Okay, and your farm is actually, that's where the movie was filmed, correct? Uh, yes, it was. Uh, the movie was filmed there in 1988. Uh, Summer of 88. Yes. So that's your house in the movie? Yes, uh, I was born and raised there, lived there all my life, and just wow. got a knock on the door one day, and they told me they wanted to make a movie, and Okay, now wait a second, Donnie. Who, now, who knocked on your door? Uh, the Dubuque Area Chamber of Commerce. They were okay. contacted by the Iowa Film, or by the Universal Studios, and they told them what kind of setting they wanted. Sure. So they scouted around the um, neighborhoods, and they had a couple hundred farms that they looked at, and yep. mine was one of them. And wow. But when you, Universal Studios comes knocking on your door, that's not something you expect every day, I would imagine, huh? No, I, I was really surprised when they knocked on my door and told me they wanted to make a movie. And uh, But when they told me they was going to make a movie about baseball, my eyes lit up a little bit, wow. and I like baseball. So Very they cool. said, uh, all they want to do is just walk around and take pictures and videotapes. And, and how big set. roughly is your farm? Don? My farm was 100 acres. 100 acres, OK. And it's uh, from downtown Dyersville. Is it east, I'm trying to remember? Yeah, northeast, northeast. Yeah, probably about five miles. OK. Okay, so now they were filming this the summer of 88, and of course our audience remembers that was a rather uh, dry year. How did they get that corn to look like that? It, it was dry. You know, the producer came up to me one day and he says, Donnie, he says, what's wrong with the corn? And I said, well, it needs some rain. And he said, well, if I don't have corn so tall by such and such a date, he said, this movie is going to be ruined. And I oh. said, well, welcome to farming. I said, well, you really <laughs> got to take care of it. Above. Welcome to farming, exactly. <laughs> So what did they do? Uh, we uh, had a little creek running through there, and we uh, went out and dammed it up, and we started pumping water on it. Mm. And it started growing really good once we got the wow. taste of water. So <clears throat> now how long did the filming take for the movie? It, uh, 15 weeks. It came there April 11th, and August 15th, they were done. Wow. So now that was your house where you're living, but did you have to bug out or what? Uh, yes, I did. I, First, you know, they were interested in the outside, and then one day they came back and uh, they told me, asked me if they could see the inside of the house, and I got sort of really confused a little bit. I thought, well, what am I getting myself into? So I let them look inside the <laughs> sure. house, and so they left again, and in a couple of weeks they come back, and they, I could just tell they were interested wow. in the place, and so I, it was just a matter of letting them sign in the contract. And right. They, did you just live in a camper then, or hotel, uh, or what? Yeah, no, I had a camper. I, it okay. really happened so fast. I, I, my neighbor had a camper for sale, and I uh, bought that, and I just moved it back to the farm, and I just sort of kept an eye on my farm. I had to wow. do the farm work anyway, so. Sure. So, now, you also, you worked for Deere, correct, Don? Yes, yes I, I worked at John Deere's from 1969 to 1999. You were uh, you were welding. I was welder in yes. Dubuque, in Dubuque, Iowa. Okay, so this movie you still had ten years left at the plant there. You're working and farming, and you were a busy guy. <laughs> yes, I was. I was probably burning a candle on both ends. <laughs> yeah, and then had a major Hollywood picture being filmed on your farm. Yes, yeah. Now uh, Kevin Costner, uh, one of my favorite actors, uh, but that whole movie, the cast in the movie was incredible. James Earl Jones, Amy Madigan, uh, Burt Lancaster. What? How were they? Were they good folks? Oh, yes. They were all really, really super nice. Um, James Earl Jones, you know, he was just really nice. And, you had uh, Darth Vader on your farm, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what's Kevin Costner like? 
He's really a down-to-earth kind of guy. I mean, you could tell he was a good athlete, you know, playing right. ball. And right. So when they were uh, making this movie, I mean, it's, I suppose it's hard when you're watching them. It's like a puzzle. You can't really see the end result. But when it came out, the first time you saw it, Donnie, what, what was your gut reaction? I really sort of knew of the film, and, you know, I just kept looking at different parts, how they piece it in, and they would film some of the things first, and, right. and then show the last in the movie. But it, it was really a great movie scene. It, uh, it premiered April 20th in Dubuque, and uh, I knew when I left the theater that night that I was going to keep it, you know, just to have my neighbors keep the and field. friends and keep the field. And okay, so before the movie came out, a little que I suppose a question mark, what, long, were you just going to go right back to farming it or keep, you didn't know at the time, huh? Well, not really, I mean, but I knew they stuck a lot of money into it and, yeah. and you know, they, they saw it and they did a lot of grading and uh, I love baseball and I thought, well, it'd be just great to have them. Right. Lots of neighbors and friends. Come well, Donnie, you must have had, <clears throat> in the ensuing almost 30 years, you must have had people from all over the country and the world come visit your farm in Dyersville. Uh, yes, I have. I'm, I, they came all over from the country. The first year I had 7,000 people. The next year I went to 15. The next wow. year I went to 30. And it just kept growing until it was all the way up to 100,000. And mm. all the people that came were, were uh, really respect uh, the place. They kept it nice and clean. And nice. Just Very cool. Let's talk about the tractor specifically now, Donnie. You, this is a 77 model 2640, and you got a, was a 146 loader on it. Um, not many hours on it, what, like 4,000 ish or something total. Yeah, 4,000. I um, I quit farming in '96, so okay. I mean actually it was only probably about 15 years of okay actually working right. on the farm. And, and it's uh, original condition. Uh, now, when people, you ever had anyone? that know that this is the tractor that offered to buy it from you? Oh yeah, I, I had a few offers, but you know, it has so many sentimental reasons right. that I, I want to keep it myself. And and the people that know, knew it was on the farm, they, they wanted to go see it, and, and right. I would take it and show it to them, and they'd want to get on it and have their pictures right. taken. You, you haven't taken it to any like parades or anything? or? Uh, no, I really haven't taken it. I, yeah. I always had down the road I was going to do it, but it right. like time slipping away. Well. Now, what, what, would it cost you to know how to drive a tractor when you, when you hopped on this thing? Uh, yeah, see, pretty well, I knew all you gotta do is get on and turn the key and yeah. turn the steering wheel and put it in gear. And, and the famous scene, folks, I'm sure you remember uh, driving through Donnie's corn here. Uh, with, and I think his little daughter in the movie was up on the, riding with him, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah so Amy, or Gabby Hoffman was her name. Okay, uh, cute, little, was, cute little kid. Yeah, she was... Uh, and I, now, again, we're coming up on 30 years next summer, the movie came out. But you guys had a big 25-year celebration a few years ago here, didn't you, in Dyersville? Ah, uh, yes, we did. Yeah, had a 25th anniversary. Uh, you get big actually, crowds come out? Oh, yeah, they, they had a real big turnout. You know, Kevin Costner came out, and he brought his band out, and uh, it was just a good, fun time. Well, now, and tell people about Dyersville, Donnie. How, how big is Dyersville, Iowa? Dyersville was 4,000 people. Uh, 4,000. Since the movie was made, there was two hotels, went up in McDonald's, went up so you know. You got a McDonald's? <laughs> yes. Wow, big time. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> so now, um, what? so the tractor, again, original condition, never thought of, like, uh, restoring it or anything, just to uh, want to keep it original? I want to find a good home for it, some place in a museum or something where people can go yeah. and see it. and Kind of see it and remember the right. fun of the movie. So you, you don't display the tractor out at the field? No, I don't. I never really did. I, I, it's a whole new ball game, you know, people getting on and off. Yeah. And, uh, right. Now, if people <clears throat> want to learn more information about the Field of Dreams or maybe plan a visit this summer, where do they go online to get uh, the best information done? Um, what? Do they just Google it? Yeah, Google. Uh, Field of Dreams? Uh, Field of Dreams movie site. Okay. Cars and folks can come out and come see the field and hang out. And, and then, uh, again, that was the house you grew up in, huh? Yeah. Very cool.
I think the main reason why people come is because, you know, I kept it small, simple, and serene. I right. um, kept it from being over-commercialized. It, it did have the tendency to become yeah. that way, and I just sort of you stayed held back. And you stayed true to the spirit of the movie. That's what the movie was about. Now, the end scene <clears throat> where Costner meets his father, and they have a catch, and of course, and I, I, hey, I'll admit it, folks, I've cried like a baby about a hundred times watching it, but then when they they shift the scene to the cars coming, you're actually, you're the first car. <laughs> yes, I was. Uh, to get that amount of people there, they, they put it in the papers, you know, that they want to be in the last scene of Shoeless Joe to be at the Darnsville Park, okay. and uh, so there's a lot of people came, and uh, we had people from three different states, Iowa, Illinois and oh. Wisconsin. Coming. Yeah, because there was no uh, computer CGI back then to make that on computer. They actually needed the cars, the people, right? Yeah, right. I mean, oh. uh, so how long did it? Uh, it took must have taken all afternoon and evening to film that. Yeah, we we started lining up probably about four o'clock, and we had to do it three different times. Okay. And uh, the last shot was the right one they, they used because they everybody in their car had their light, uh, radio on and they could hear what was going on and, mm. and the producer told them they was being broadcast on the radio and to turn their headlights from bright to dim okay. and that gave an effect like they were actually driving and what i know the, the scene was a little dark but what were you driving <laughs> up front down your first i was car? driving a buick, a buick? <laughs> nice now so you bought the 2640 in 77 brand new what was the tractor on the farm before that? I, my dad had a 60 John Deere and I was just sort of getting into farming. I was gonna take the farm over and okay. uh, I sort of rented it and he still had livestock and uh, sure. so we, we worked together until okay. I finally bought it in 1980. And okay, well where's Danny? Let's get Danny in here. The guy, now this is the guy Folks, that Don, Don, you bought the tractor from this guy, right? This is the guy. So this is Danny. Last name again, Danny? Vasky. Danny Vasky. And now, Danny, you got to turn around. This jacket, folks, this is unbelievable. Look Kel at that. Kel is that pronounced Kelker? Yes. Kelker Implement. So that's that was the name of the dealership back in '77. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Danny, tell us about your your history with deer. You started in the '60s. I started in 1966. Okay. And uh, I first started assembling machinery. Yep. And then a couple of years later, I started selling machinery. Okay. John Wild was the original owner. He married a Calker. Okay. And the establishment was downtown. And it was there for, uh, I don't know exactly, but it was in the last part of the 1800s. Wow. So it's back quite a ways. That's a piece of Dyersville. Yes. They sold milking equipment and everything sure. you could think of back a long time ago. Sure. Okay. So then you actually wound up uh, buying into the dealership. Is that correct, Danny? Y yes. When was that? Uh, I bought it in 1983. 1983. Okay. Very cool. So now you actually have the, the original manual for this yes, 77 26 Ford? manual. Okay. We got to zoom in here, folks. Uh, Donnie was very meticulous. Why don't you show us in the back the records? he kept Danny. He wrote down when he changed the oil. Yeah, see, there you go. And Danny, just always, with all your equipment, just, you, you knew the importance of taking care of it? Yes, I, I Documenting? I took very good care of it. I, I, I really, this is my pride and joy, that 2640 is. Well, oh, piece of history. And Danny, as the movie came out and became such a I guess such a, a, a lasting hit, kind of a piece of American culture, that had to be pretty cool to know you sold the tractor to one of your customers here. Why don't yes. you talk about that? I didn't realize it at first, but when yeah. the movie came out, I thought, boy, that's a big thing. Yeah, yeah, very cool. And people around Dyersville, when the movie came out, were, I imagine, had to be pretty excited. Yes, they were. Featured that way. Very cool. Well, now, and hey, Danny, I got to compliment you. you. That coat, you fit in it like it's awesome. How, how, you got to give me tips on how to do that. <laughs> I haven't changed any in 51 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Guys, uh, Donnie and, and Danny, thanks for telling us the story about this famous tractor. And Donnie, you know this, but you have, you know, 
you were a piece of something really special. You know, this culture we live in today, there's so much garbage and junk, and that's why I keep watching that movie, because it's, it's pure. And uh, yeah, thanks for your part in it and telling us about your John Deere 2640. Thank you, and you're welcome. Thanks. Well, folks, we got to thank the guy that made this story happen here. This is my friend Marty Steffen with Dyersville Implement, part of the Bodensteiner Implement Group, a great dealership here, 10 stores, Northeast Iowa. Marty reached out and told me about Don and this story. So, Marty, again, huge thank you for, for teeing this story up. Uh, I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, I'd like to extend uh, our thank you on behalf of Dyersville Equipment and the gender community to Don Lansing uh, for a dream to uh, do the interview on his uh, about uh, the filming of the Field of Dreams and also his gender 2640 tractor and uh, preserving the Field of Dreams and, uh, and and keeping it alive even after the movie producers and staff left him right. with uh, with a baseball field in the, right. in, in the middle of his cornfields. So, right and it, uh, Don does deserve a thank you for all the work uh, keeping something special like that and uh, certainly uh, again cool if, that if Don's was, history with John Deere he uh, he spent many hours preserving that field with a John Deere 318 garden track for the first few years and nice. because of that the field was maintained and people came people come and, and folks thousands if you, of people traveled to Dyersville to see this preserved field of dreams and folks if you haven't been to Dyersville Iowa Get it on your calendar, spring, summer, fall, come on out, see the Field of Dreams. It is really a magical place. Marty, thanks again for uh, setting this up and, uh, and telling me about Don and the tractor.